Hey everybody, it's Andrew back again with another video and today we have the showdown between the Huawei Matebook and the Samsung Galaxy Tab Pro S. Let's find out which one is the king of the two-in-ones. Let's find out which one is the buy or the don't buy. It's showdown time here at AMD Tech. Today we have the Huawei Matebook versus the Samsung Galaxy Tab Pro S. Two Surface Pro 4 competitors. Let's find out which one is the king of the two-in-ones. Let's find out which one is a buy or a don't buy. These are very two similar devices, both with Intel Core M3 Skylake processors, 4GB of RAM and 128GB of SSD storage. The Huawei Matebook starts at $699, does not include any accessories. If you want the pen, folio keyboard case and Matebook, those all cost extra. For the Samsung Galaxy Tab Pro S, that starts at $799, includes the keyboard case. And for another $59, there's a Tab Pro pen as a separate accessory. The Huawei Matebook has only one port. It's a USB Type-C 3.1, doesn't support Thunderbolt, and does not have an SD card slot. So in order to expand this device, you're going to have to get the $89 Huawei Mate Dock. It gives you VGA, HDMI, two more USB 3.0 ports, and gigabit Ethernet. One unique feature of the Huawei Matebook is that it is the only two-in-one with a fingerprint sensor, which allows you to log into Windows Hello and Windows 10. The Samsung Galaxy Tab Pro S also has only one USB Type-C port with no Thunderbolt support, just like the Matebook, and does not have an SD card slot, so there is no possibility of expansion with this device. Both of these devices have only two positions, one here and one there. That's it. As far as the displays are concerned, they both are excellent. The Huawei Matebook has a 12-inch display with an IPS panel that has a resolution of 2160 by 1440. The Samsung Galaxy Tab Pro S has an AMOLED display with also a resolution of 2160 by 1440. Both are excellent screens, both get very bright, but I gotta give the nod to the Samsung Galaxy Tab Pro S with its outstanding AMOLED display. The inky blacks, the bright, bright colors, are really something special. Now, the Matebook has an excellent display in its own right, and it really is excellent as far as color representation, accuracy, and viewing angles. You cannot go wrong with either display, but again, that special AMOLED display by Samsung really stands out. As far as performance is concerned, both devices did very similar. On the Geekbench 3.0 test, the Huawei Matebook did a 2403 on the single core score and a 4758 on the multi core score. Whereas the Samsung Galaxy Tab Pro S did a 2067 on the single core score and the 4308 on the multi core score. As far as the Crystal Disk Mark test is concerned, the Huawei Matebook did a 534.7 on the read and a 160.0 on the write. 4K scores, 20.22 on the read, and a very healthy 64.92 on the write. The Samsung Galaxy Tab Pro S did a 539.1 on the read, and a 179.1 on the write. 4K score, 12.63 on the read, and 70.25 on the write. Very similar performance as far as SSDs are concerned. And speaking of the SSDs used in these devices, the Huawei Matebook uses a Samsung SSD, which is a bit ironic since the Samsung Galaxy Tab Pro S uses a light on SSD, not its own Samsung SSD. As far as battery life is concerned, the Samsung Galaxy Tab Pro S outlasted the Huawei Matebook. The Tab Pro S did a very healthy 8.5 to 9 hours, whereas the Matebook only did 6 to 6.5 six hours, both with screen brightness at around 70 to 75 percent. As far as sound is concerned, both devices did pretty well. Both got loud, both had nice sound. Let's take a look and a listen to both devices, first with the Huawei Matebook, then the Samsung Galaxy Tab Pro S. Let's take a look and a listen at our latest video, which is the full review of the Acer Aspire S13 Touch. Let's take a look and a listen. Touch. It's a 13.3 inch ultra portable laptop, which weighs only 2.9 pounds, great specs, and an excellent price. Let's find out if it's a buy or a don't buy. The Acer Aspire S13 Touch is a 13.3 inch Ultrabook from Acer. It's got a very sleek look, nice specs, and an 
it's Andrew back again with another video and today we have the review of the Acer Aspire S13 Touch. It's a 13.3 inch ultra portable laptop which weighs only 2.9 pounds, great specs and an excellent price. Let's find out if it's a buy or a don't buy. The Acer Aspire S13 Touch is a 13.3 inch ultrabook from Acer. It's got a very sleek look they both sounded very good, but I'm going to have to give a slight nod to the Huawei MateBook, which just sounded a little bit louder, a little bit fuller and richer. Both did very well, but again, slight nod to the Huawei MateBook. As far as keyboard is concerned, the Huawei MateBook outdid the Samsung Galaxy Tab Pro S. We loved its key travel at 1.6 millimeters. It's 52 grams of actuation. That's the amount of force needed for a press. And for the Galaxy Tab Pro S, it only had 0.95 millimeters of key travel. That's 47 grams of actuation, and disappointingly, it is not backlit. We wish it was backlit just like the Huawei MateBook's keyboard is. And as far as the trackpad is concerned, we really like the Huawei MatePad's trackpad much better than the Samsung Galaxy Tab Pro S. We could do gestures, smooth scrolling, and it was very responsive. Whereas the Samsung Galaxy Tab Pro S's trackpad was smaller, shorter than this competition, and just wasn't as responsive. Overall, the Huawei trackpad outshone the Samsung trackpad. For those digital artists and note takers, the $59 Huawei Mate Pen Stylus is a very good accessory, especially if you want to take notes or draw on this tablet. It did very well in our tests, and we like the fact that it does not require quadruple A batteries, but rather it is rechargeable. The pen has 2048 levels of pressure sensitivity, it worked well with drawing and taking notes, and it had very good palm rejection. Overall, very good experience with the pen, good job Huawei. And as an added bonus, there is a laser pointer on the top of the pen, great for PowerPoint and boardroom meetings. Unfortunately, we don't have the pen for the Samsung Galaxy Tab Pro S as it was ordered, but then it was said that it was delayed, so we don't have one to show you. However, the reports I've been reading have been subpar as far as its Bluetooth connection, its responsiveness, and its overall use. So until we get one into the studio, we will reserve judgment until that time. So overall, which one is the buy or the don't buy? Is it the Huawei MateBook or the Samsung Galaxy Tab Pro S? Well, I'm going to have to give the nod to the Huawei MateBook. Although I love the Samsung Galaxy Tab Pro S AMOLED the screen, it's absolutely gorgeous and I really do love looking at it. There are just too many limitations on that device when compared to the Huawei MateBook that prevents me from picking it as my go-to device. What do I mean? Well, although both of them have only one USB Type-C port, the Huawei MateBook has the Mate Dock, and that is an $89 accessory. Although I wish it was in the box, I do like the fact that it is available as an accessory, and you can connect it to VGA, HDMI, Gigabit Ethernet, two more USB, and again, it's just a much more versatile option than what the Samsung is able to give you. And by the way, the screen for the Huawei MateBook is no slouch in itself. It's an excellent IPS panel. They both have a resolution of 2160 by 1440, but I just have to give the nod to the Huawei MateBook, even though its screen is not quite as good, although excellent in its own right. I like the MateBook's keyboard folio case much better than the Samsung Galaxy's case. I like the keyboard travel. I like its key travel. I like the fact the trackpad is more responsive. Gestures are better and better for scrolling. I don't like Samsung's trackpad at all. I found it too small and I found it just wasn't as responsive as I needed it to be. I like the fact that Huawei MateBook has the fingerprint sensor, so logging in with Windows Hello is a cinch. I really appreciate that convenience. Although the Samsung has the same thing with the Samsung Flow, you still need a Samsung device to log in. And that to me is not quite as good. Although Samsung did better in the battery department, a very good eight and a half to nine hours, 
it still was not enough for me to put me over the edge in terms of picking that as my two in one. Huawei did pretty good, six to six and a half hours. I bet you if I turn down the screen brightness to about 50%, you can get another half an hour to one hour more in terms of battery life. And as far as price is concerned, although I like the fact that Samsung throws the keyboard in at the $799 price level, you still have to pay another $59 for the pen. What I don't like about Huawei is the fact that although it starts at $699 for the tablet itself, you still have to add in the $89 Mate dock, you have to add in the $60 pen, and you have to add in the $130 keyboard case. So you really are pushing close to $1,000, what really started out as $700. So that's one thing I don't like about the Matebook. But overall, I really like the fact that it had the better keyboard case, the better options in terms of expandability with the Mate dock, and I liked its pen. I didn't get a chance to use a Samsung pen because the one I had on order was delayed. So when I do get it, I hope to give you an update as to how it is performing with the Samsung Galaxy Tab Pro S. From the reports I've heard so far, not too good. So overall, the Huawei MateBook is my pick over the Samsung Galaxy Tab Pro S. Although I have to say, I love the Tab Pro S's screen. If you're really into AMOLED screen, really look at that device. Coming soon to AMD Tech, this week in fact, is the unboxing and review of the, the HP Spectre X360. It's a two-in-one device, yoga style device, that has eight gigs of RAM, Core i7, Skylake, 256 gigs of SSD. It's the ash silver, which is almost a copper gold combo. Looks pretty premium in my book. Let's find out how that's gonna turn out. Stay tuned for the unboxing to be followed by a full review as we normally do here at AMD Tech. So please hit the like button, please subscribe, please share this video, please leave a comment in the comment section below. Let me know how I'm doing. Let me know if there's a device or some application or software out there you'd like me to review. I will do my best to try to make that happen. So until next time, this is Andrew from AMD Tech. See ya. <laughs>